The critical thing about medical anthropology that distinguishes it from everything else is it is a combination of two academic and real realities. One looking at the biological aspects of human health and disease and the other looking at the cultural constraints and beliefs that shape the interpretation of human health and disease. So they're more inclusive and more interdisciplinary than many other areas. My own particular research for many years has been in water wash and waterborne disease. The most interesting project was in the global pandemic of cholera that started in South America and went to the tip of South America, came up through Central America and into the United States. I was lucky enough to be hired as a medical anthropologist to help most remote communities deal with the unending transmission of that disease. The people who did all the hard work were really the Ecuadorians who were in country. And I worked very closely with them, helping design medical anthropology methodologies and training them and working with them. So we used things like surveys, we used medical records, we used epidemiology, we used ethnography, and then we used community participatory involvement. So we focused on training members of the community to give us information that we couldn't otherwise know. And then we in turn gave them information about, for instance, what the symptoms of cholera were and how to avoid contracting cholera. These were things that were new to them that were very much based on a biomedical model. We learned from them all sorts of beliefs about where they thought disease might be coming from that we couldn't have anticipated from the outside. The Cholera Project is a successful story of the welding of biomedicine and cultural anthropology in medical anthropology. My research for a long time has focused in, on addiction, and I've done a lot of that work down in Colombia. But alongside that, I've opened up my interests into areas of behavioral health, and then as a way to understand some of the issues that came up from my work, and as an extension of the bioculture approach, I helped develop the field of neuroanthropology, which is the integration of neuroscience and anthropology to address how people interact in real life settings rather than in clinical or laboratory based settings. I've spent a lot of time doing uh, public based initiatives, largely through digital anthropology, where we started off running a neuroanthropology blog on Neuroanthropology Net in December 2007. And that quickly grew in readership at an amazing rate. And we realized that by putting those out in public, that first increased the quality of our conversations. And second, it made it accessible to a wide range of people. And so I think for us as an applied anthropology department here, this sort of public engagement, often through digital means or community-based approaches, adds to the strengths of our traditional scholarship in ways that can have a much broader impact outside the university setting. My primary research area is migrant health. I look at how migration and citizenship status um, is an axis of health inequality, just like other types of health inequalities, such as gender and ethnicity. So my current project is a National Science Foundation funded project that looks at mixed status families along the U.S.-Mexico border. Specifically, we're working in southern Texas in the Rio Grande Valley. These are some of the 2.3 million families in the United States that have a constellation of U.S. citizens, undocumented migrants, and individuals with sort of a gray legal status, all living within the same household. We're looking at what types of healthcare inequalities exist within families and how these family members experience different types of barriers and opportunities in regards to healthcare and education here in the United States. So this is a project that's focused on U.S. immigration and healthcare policy and the intersection of the two. So we're working in a region that is considered to be medically disadvantaged. And what we're trying to show from an applied aspect is that when you combine these two policies, immigration and healthcare policy, some very unintended effects tend to emerge. And one of those unintended effects is that you exclude U.S. citizen children from many of the benefits of, for example, the recent healthcare reform. I am uh, trained as a biological anthropologist uh, and I specialize in uh, food and nutrition. So one of my more recent studies has been a longitudinal study of food insecurity and health in Costa Rica. This is in an area that has undergone a significant transition from agriculture to tourism. As they move away from agriculture towards tourism, their diets are changing, their lifestyles are changing, and the level of food insecurity is getting worse. So we're very interested in how these lifestyle changes in response to tourism are shaping people's diets, 
their food-related behaviors and how that is affecting their health status. Our students have helped a lot in this regard. We also run a field school in Costa Rica. Every summer the students go there and do research and one of the topical areas has been food and nutrition. So between our research and the research that students have done, that's informed us in terms of these dietary shifts that we see going on in the area. So USF Anthropology, the faculty and students, we have a commitment to trying to make a difference in the world. And this is something that ties us together intellectually as well as personally. And that's really one of the most powerful things about this department. We have a wonderful anthropology department. It's vibrant, it's uh, well accomplished, uh, serious, serious scholars. We train our students in theory and method, but we also listen to them and we give them an opportunity to get involved in cutting edge, uh, state of the art research that make a difference in people's lives. So the graduate students here at USF Anthropology are broadly trained and they're trained to think about applied topics. Um, and so many of our alum don't necessarily go into academia, although plenty do. Many of them are working in very applied policy settings, they're working in international development, they're working at state and local um, levels of policy. So training here at USF really provides a foundation for those types of jobs as well.